and welcome to Canterbury Life this Wednesday morning. And to be fair, I'm not a fan of when daylight saving switches back. You do get to see the really nice sunrises, but boy, when you head home, that half past seven comes around pretty quick. Um, and I don't forget at the end of the month, South Island is going digital. Yes, CTV has already gone digital, but there's quite a few out there that haven't quite made the change. Now, one of the things is that you can, if you're having a bit of trouble, financially that you can actually apply for the targeted assistance. It's a really good scheme that will actually help you get a TV that will actually work or the package that you need to work on your old one. Um, don't forget that disposing of your old TVs, you can go to www.projectgreen.co.nz um, and we're really glad, love the feedback that we're getting about the sharper picture and of course the quality of the project programs. On the show today we have Rosie Davidson and she's going to talk to us all about the Akira Harvest Festival. But first up is Kyle Cunningham and we're going to talk about it's Haemophilia World Day today isn't it? It is, it is World Haemophilia Day today. Um, so let's let's actually put it in a New Zealand context, you know, uh, what is haemophilia actually? Well haemophilia is a bleeding disorder where the body of a haemophiliac doesn't generate one of the necessary factors in order for uh, clotting to happen within the body. So for, for a New Zealand perspective, modern day New Zealand perspective, what that means is it's more about the internal damage mm. that can be done from bruising or spraining an ankle or anything along those lines. Whereas in the past, for the last 100 years or so, it was more about external bleeding being mm. the problem that you can't stop that at all. So these days it's, uh, it's a more refined process. Well, modern me medicine has meant that it, you're able now to live with it instead of it being, you know, kind of this um, disorder Definitely. that would, would severely curtail your life. So let's put it, uh, you know, is, is there many in New Zealand that actually have this? Uh, there are approximately a thousand sufferers of haemophilia in New Zealand at the moment. And of those thousand, there are about 400 who would be classed as severely impaired mm. by it, uh, which is. Um, as you can tell, just under mm -hmm. half, but the other ones uh, have a pretty good have a pretty good shot and enjoy a lot of safe time and uh, don't have too many problems. Now this is a hereditary drug and it, it does it, well. It's not a disease. We don't call it call it a disorder, don't we? That are, that actually predominantly affects males. Yes. And so, is it is, is it from from your mum or your grandma? Because sometimes they can skip, can't they, or it can well, lie dormant. That, that's true. The genetics uh, traditionally are the haemophilia gene is from the mother, so they are the carrier. They themselves can actually present as mild haemophilia. Mm -hmm. Some of them have very low levels of the necessary factors themselves, which can uh, lead to its own problems. But the mother is the carrier who will then pass it on to the son. There are a few, uh, very, very few cases of it happening, uh, haemophilia stock standard haemophilia happening to a female but it's not unheard of. It's incredible isn't it that it that, is. that should be one of these disorders that only really affects male but in slight cases. Um, I, I guess with the foundation you know what is what is its role here in New Zealand? Well the haemophilia foundation in New Zealand are um, really top tier when it comes to advocacy, education uh, and support of people with bleeding disorders in, in the country. And I, I say top tier and I mean that, you know, the, mm. all yeah. around the world, uh, other people look to us, how we run the camps, how we help people, how we are in communication with not only the medical professionals, but also the sufferers, uh, physiotherapists. It all, it all works together for a comprehensive healthcare and so, uh, social, social work plan. Mm. And, I, and I suppose just even in, you know, when I was younger, it, you know, as, as a disorder, you know, it was kind of huge in New Zealand. Now you hardly ever talk about it. Yeah. Do you think that's because just the, the, the way that medicine has progressed and how much under control it is now, if that's the right word? That's, that's, exactly, that's exactly how it goes. Mm. It kind of faded into the background because we had much better uh, medical care and uh, medical supplies. Medicine just went through the roof and the quality of life for your everyday haemophiliac went from uh, rather poor to, you know, mm. normal to outstanding, you know, like a, a lot of people really, really have good life. Yeah. It's a very resource hungry um, disorder, you know, haemophilia. So does government well support it? Is, is it, is it well funded so that, that we've it been is. able to, it is? Uh, in the, in the 
mid to late 80s to early 90s, uh, as you may remember, uh, mm. there was a lot of the, the bad blood kind of things mm. in the UK, Ireland, Australia, America, all across, you know, people were having trouble with the uh, blood transfusions and that not being so safe. Um, but what we have now is completely artificial, really good. It just, uh, you know, mm. it's fantastic. So it is well funded, but it's part of, you know, it's not specific. We're going to pay this much for haemophilia care. It's all part of the package. package. It's just the advocacy groups like HFNZ and mm. like all around the world have said, make this a part of the package. You know, it's, mm. it's less expensive. It's much better to have these people protected rather than trying to fix the problems as they happen. As they happen. Mm. Ah. So, of course, it's World Haemophilia Day today. What's happening and why is that important? Uh, well, we'll obviously have a lot of promotional work going around. Uh, there's lots of wristbands, a lot of the pharm pharmaceutical companies really... So the wristbands, uh, is that that lovely one that you've got on? Uh, no, this isn't <laughs> one that I've got at the moment. This is just my medical alert one. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they've got red ones. I've got them on my keys, actually. Uh, little okay. red, you know, just like, you know, yep. the little rubbery ones. They're cool. Lots of promos. Uh, the HFNZ will be hosting a, a night for its members. Uh, we'll get some uh, medical medical professionals mm. to come in and discuss what's happening in the, in the world of haemophilia care today. And New Zealand is at the forefront of that also. Yes, I had noticed that when I went onto the, the website. So I, I guess for that cause and the money, the money that you're raising this time, is it going for anything in, in specific? Uh, well, what happens with HFNZ is we really look towards, uh, there's two major groups, and it's the young kids and the older guys who do need a bit more help because they've had a rougher ride, and the damage done to them is a little more mm. uh, long term. Uh, so it goes to helping those guys and it also goes to helping educating these kids, uh, gaining confidence, you know, because you can imagine being mm. a child and, you know, mm. you already kind of feel like an outsider, you're yeah. a little more fragile uh, physically, you know, you've got, to, you've got all these obstacles. Mm. They're not insurmountable, but they're still a little large. Yeah. So it goes to teaching them, you know, life skills, discipline, confidence, you know, we go kayaking, abseiling, all, all that kind of stuff, you know, mm. that's, that's what it goes to. There's a number of ways that people can donate, one being the wristband. What are the other ways? Uh, normally we have, we, we ask people to wait for the phone call yeah. from, we have yeah. a, um, an intermediary mm. who go about that, and that, that is the best way to do it, to go through uh, those guys when you get the phone call. So we should tell you viewers out there, you know about 7 o'clock when those phone calls come through, <laughs> just wait and see if it's from the Haemophiliate Society, because that's one that you can probably do. Some of the other ones you can pass on, but I, I, you know, I've, I've done it myself, and we've, we have a, a, a friend's son who has a Haemophiliac, so we've always given to, to that course, because oh. at, at the time that he was a Haemophiliac, it was very expensive, and, and you actually had to provide a lot of the stuff yourself. It now, was. what we're going to do is, I want to tell you something else about Carl, or he's going to tell you something about himself, so when we come back after the break, I'll tell you a little bit more about why Carl is so interested in the Haemophilia Foundation. <laughs> 